Puck's in a micro away from the Proads. Focusing down soccer. It's one by one. Hold coming in from every single angle. There's a time warp. But look at this concave. This crescent moon. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to WCS America. Hopefully you're having a great Monday afternoon or evening, depending on where you live. I'm Axel Sass, joined by Nicholas Ranish. Axel, how's it going? It's going amazing, man. I was just watching the uh, the Global Finals yes. last weekend. So was I, this past weekend. Yes. We watched it. I think we watched that together. We did. We got a nice projector <laughs> in our living room and we showed up on the big screen. Those are awesome. Those are awesome. Yeah. And I'm so excited to see who makes it to season two. Yeah. And that's why we're here today. Absolutely, guys. Of course, you know, you might be like, wait, the season final just happened, so why are we still in season one? Well, this is the season one of WCS America still as far as the Challenger League is concerned. We got one more little bracket group type area to get through. It's going to be over the next two weeks. It's going to be group play where the top two advance into the Premier League of season two. Third place goes to Challenger League of season two. Fourth place is out format as standard as can be. Everyone knows it um, as far as it's, it's, you know, double elimination group play where the winners play each other. The winner of that goes on. The losers play each other. The loser of that is out kind of a thing. So very familiar format, but a lot of awesome players involved in this thing. Yes, I mean, <laughs> the group stages for WCS America is insane. There's a first group, SCC, Go to your hard max set. I mean, that could almost be a Premier League group. Seriously, right like, <laughs> I mean, what was your first impression when you saw this group? <laughs> I was like, two of these guys are not going to be in Premier League season two. Yeah, what? I know. It's what? crazy. It's crazy. Um, I actually was taught, like, I think like a day after this group came out, Ghost User messages me on Skype. He's like, dude, what the heck, man? It's th This literally is, I, I would consider this the group of death. Yes, for I, sure. I, uh, Among all the, the Challenger League groups, of course, I think we might be scrolling through the rest of them, but I, I would consider this, you know, one of the most difficult groups. Definitely. I mean, you've got, you know, SCC and Hart, two really good Korean Terrence, Ghost User, Max, a great players as well from China and the United States. Yep. But uh, there's seven other groups. There are. Yeah. Um, so, see some other groups here. We have group... B, I think. Yeah, here we go with Major Vibe, Killer, and Bales. Another tough group if you look at, I mean, Bales is clearly the, uh, the underdog yeah. there, but uh, Major and Killer, both, uh, I mean, Major, the best player from Mexico, Killer, the best player from pretty much all of South America. Mm -hmm. Uh, two people who really kind of you want to see in the Premier League, but then Vibe also. He's, you know, the 2012 USA champion. 2012 yeah. North America, number two. So this is actually another very, very tough group. And uh, Group C, I think, is pretty tough as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, th that group, it's all, all Americans too, which is actually as American as far as, you know, South America, North America, Central America, kind of a thing. Yeah, here's Group C, Kapach, XY, Huck, and Idra. Um, you know, Kapach is the guy who made that crazy run in the... In the, in the bracket stage, of course, and then uh, was eventually taken out by Nesty. One of the games I think he should have won, but, you know, you can never underestimate him. Of course, Idra will be forfeiting this this group, so, you know, three of these guys are in the Season 2, which I'm sure they're happy about. That's right. That's right. Of course, only two of them make the Premier League. They'll be fighting over those two Premier League spots. Group D is going to have some uh, great players as well in it. Suppy, Illusion, Tilia, and Hwansen. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, this one, it's like, you kind of really want to see Suppy and Illusion. Like, yeah, they're, they're I, I the feel favorites. like they're going to be the fan favorites. They're going to be the fan favorites but here, and maybe as far as skill-wise, the favorites as well. Yeah, Hwansing, though, he's, he's shown some great games before. And, and Telia, she has this eccentric style where she does some really crazy builds. So I can see anyone getting through that group. Uh, I mean, I think a lot of people would really bet on Suppy, though. He's shown great play over the last couple uh, yeah. A couple of weeks. And you never know what you're going to get with Telia, a random player. Of course, we got Group E, Jim, Ian, Jadon, and Drunken Boy. Uh, Drunken Boy might not be too happy with this bracket draw. I think, you know, when I was considering a group of death, this one was up there too. You know, Jadon and Jim alone are, are incredibly good. Jim, of course, being number one Grandmaster on the Korean server. He has been there. He's done that. Uh, and, and Drunken Boy, of course, one of those solid Terran players up and coming, trying to make it happen. 
Jim's definitely a big favorite to make it through this group. A lot of people thought Jim would just crawl through the bracket stage, but he got knocked down by Scarlet. Uh, no shame there, but perhaps that means his PVC has some holes in it that Jadong or Ian could exploit. Of course, Group F is going to be the next one in the lineup. We see Top State, Minigun, and Xenocider State and Minigun, those two North American Protoss players that everyone wants to succeed. And of course, Xenocider just joined Team Evil Geniuses, so a lot of fan favorites in this group. That's right. I think uh, Top is somebody people are going to be looking to. This guy's micro is insane and pvp is often a game of micro yeah this guy had that amazing set against killer with just insane mm -hmm. blink stalkers group g Tasia, of course a big favorite in this group yeah. but a lot of kind of younger players from the americas yeah. neeb hello kitty and maker all on the well actually neeb and maker on the younger side hello kitty playing uh from college for right. c-selfie mm -hmm. you know neeb and hello kitty are, are two of those guys that you never really know what you're gonna get and they can take games off of anyone, not even kidding. So everyone sees that group and like, oh, Tage is through. Don't think that for a second. And finally, Group H, Sen, Phoenix, Oz, and Sage. Another pretty stacked group here. Um, you know, I think the favorites in this group are going to be Oz and Sage, I would say. You know, Sen has to be up there too. Again, it's, it's so hard to call these. It, it is. Uh, I mean, I might well say Sen's the favorite of the group. I think he's shown tremendous play. Uh, of course, he did make the round of 16 in the Premier League, knocked out there yep. by uh, a very tough group where you had Nesty and Alicia and uh, another great Zerg player there. But that brings us to today, Yes. Group A. First up, STC versus Max said, followed by Ghost Zero versus Heart, then the winner's match and the loser's match, and then that deciding final match. Again, top two go to Premier League Season 2. Huge stuff on the line. Let's talk about the match we got started coming up. It's going to be the STC versus Max said. Now, the STC hailing from Korea, representing Team Complexity, he got to the round of 16 of the Premier League. He was the guy who almost took out Moonglade to get to the round of 8 but the guy that everyone was kind of rooting against because it, it felt like a lot of people were wanting Moonglade to make that run. And he was able to take STC out in a very intense 2-1. But the STC out for a revenge, lost it to Muslim in the third round of the bracket stage, uh, 0-2. Of course, his opponent, Max said from Invictus Gaming, hails from China. So we don't know a ridiculous amount about him, but uh, definitely a very solid Protoss player. That's right. One of the most uh, successful Protoss players in China. He's uh, done very well in multiple events. He got the third place at 2012 WCG. He's actually one of the only Chinese players to actually travel, or not travel, because those events were actually in China, but play in events that had international competition, also coming from Warcraft. So, game number one is going to be an Aquan Waste. Are the players ready? I'm asking right now, the players in the lobby, we're live right now, and I'd like to remind you very gently, guys, get on Twitter, get on Team Liquid, get on Reddit, let people know this is happening. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter, at Axel Toss, and at ISAxLab, Max said, given ready, the SDC given the go-go, I hit the start game button, and again, we have a giant Smurf observing for us, as always, here at the MLG Studio, so shout out to him, always does a great job. But, you hear the countdown, first map is Akalon Waste, let's get into it, time for some StarCraft II, WCS America, and what a map to start off on. It's going to be a very exciting match. In the video process, Max said video Neo Planet S and Star Station, both maps favoring two base pressure. So ah. that really indicates he probably wants to play more uh, macro focused three because, base gameplays. Because didn't STC veto Cloud Kingdom? Yes. Cloud Kingdom is kind of a hybrid map. You yeah. can do whatever you want. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. That's a good point. Uh, but Akalon Waste is one of those cookie cutter maps where everyone's going to be familiar with. It's one of those maps in a veto process. Usually, it's going to it's going to come out of the you know the the dusty woodworks of, of maps being thrown around everywhere. Uh, as as one you know both players generally agree that you know they're gonna they're gonna play on. So nice little setting here for game number one in the top left hand location. I present your blue Protoss player hailing from China, and representing Team Invictus Gaming. He is Max Ed. Of course, Max Ed. Got to this point through the bracket stage of the Challenger League. He got 0-2 uh, against Illusion in the first round. Of course, he had to play in the Challenger League qualifier to get there. So he's hoping to make something happen. But his opponent is very scary indeed in the bottom right-hand location of Akalon Wastes. It is your red Terran player. Representing Team Complexity, he got to the round of 16 of the WCS America Premier League before falling to Moonglade and then lost to the Muslim. 0-2 in the third round. He is the STC. And it looks like I'm observing right now, which is fine. I, I'm a little rusty. <laughs> I'm a little rusty, so bear with me, ladies and gents. Uh, but we got PBT Akalon Wastes. What do you expect out of these two guys, Mr. Nick? Well, you know, as I said earlier, Max said really vetoing the, the two base focused maps. And so in this situation, I, I think that we're going to see Max said really focus on the three base type of play. So you're getting two gases already here. Two gases before second pylon is a product hoping that I personally like a lot. Get all that gas income. 
Getting a Psycro up super fast isn't that important as long as you have gas once it is up. Yeah, again, you know, at Kalan Waste, you have these three bases that, um, you know, that are relatively easy to take. So not too surprising to see the expansion type openings. Again, the rush distance is fairly long. Um, so, you know, you're able to identify what your opponent is doing and then, you know, adjust properly. So it's less likely to see those one base type plays on a map like Akalon Waste. Now, there is a lot of air distance, and this gets a little bit tricky as we approach the mid game, because once the, the Terran player gets Metabax out and really starts trying to abuse the expansions of, of the Protoss, it can get pretty dicey. And if a Protoss can, like, get out of that stage of the game, taking a deep breath, not losing too many probes, they're going to be pretty happy. So we'll have to see what STC does here to try to apply that aggression that you kind of have to apply to a Protoss player to make sure they don't get too greedy and start teching everywhere. That's right, SCC has uh, several options going right now. He went Command Center first, followed by Double Barracks. Now he's trying to see if his opponent is expanding, see how many gateway units are being made, if he needs to build a bunker or not. And of course, seeing the Zelt, seeing the Chrono Boosted Gateway Mothership Chrono away, he knows that there could be some gateway poking in his direction, so he's going ahead and throwing that bunker up at his natural, of course. Yep. Uh, he will have that up in time to defend. He shouldn't take any damage. Mm -hmm. Still no gas is being made yet from a Terran player. So he may decide that... Command Center? Uh, maybe? Maybe, or maybe just going to get a third barracks. This is sure. something I've seen a, a couple Terran players do, getting that third barracks. And the reason they like to get the three barracks is out early is just out of fear of some like really early Oracle. They want to get a lot of marine production mm. very, very early on. Although it does set their tech back just a little bit. All right, so we got an SCV heading to the watchtower at the top right. A Zealot trying to find out what's going on. He's a bunker. That's not much. Let's see if he tries to absorb some damage and sneak the Stalker by. I'm assuming he knows about that natural. I'm not sure exactly if he's, he's actually seen it. He, he has not scouted okay, quite yet. Okay, so he yet, might try to get confirmation fairly soon. That's right. It, um, he left a Marine in the bunker, right? He did. Okay. One Marine in the bunker, four Marines there to deflect this Mothership Corps. Yep. Smart. Very and smart of course, indeed. but with one Marine in the bunker, the Protoss units can oh. try to sneak by here. That's what they're going to do. Going straight to the natural, seize the command center, and might get some SCV kills. So nice little run by here by Max at STC, losing some mining time too by having to pull these SCVs. Marines coming back, though. That Zealot is probably going to be toast, unless he's really lucky. He is running in absolute fear. Of course, you've got the Mothership Corps there in the main base. Might try to throw down a time warp on these SCVs, which can be annoying. It has to be careful, though. It's not super close to any airspace, so Marines could run down. But actually, right now, the Marines are busy chasing down the yeah. gateway units. So he knows it's safe. And look at this. Yeah. SCVs are vulnerable. He's able to grab two kills on Mothership Corps, so very successful. They're a little bit of an over chase, I would say, by the STC. But yeah. well, it really oh, wanted to kill that Zealot, man. Exactly. And on the other hand, during all that, STC was able to sneak an SCV into his opponent's base. He was able to see the fact that his opponent had an expansion. Ah. I don't think he saw, no, he didn't see, he did not see the forge going up in the back. So he doesn't know his opponent is getting those very fast upgrades. So he knows his opponent's mothership core is across the map, so he might try to cut this mothership core off here with the Marines. Oh, he the sees Marine. it with the watchtower, didn't he? He did, but he's but going the, the wrong way. Yeah, the Marines are going the wrong way, of course. It is a little bit safer to go this way if there's too many stalkers <gasps> out in the field. These Marines might be dead. They are. They, they might have overextended just a little bit. Remember, these are Marines without combat shield, without stim, without medevac support, and stalkers in open can kite them, but Max had is a little bit afraid, too. He's been apprehensive. Now coming in and poking with Ooh, stalkers. Got to be careful. There's like little bits of terrain here that you can try to take advantage of where your opponent doesn't necessarily have vision of you. Um, so we're seeing Max had try to take advantage of stalker getting a little bit low in health, could be backing away. And both players can be like, you know what? I'm not going to commit to this battle. I'm going to back up. I got some stuff going on at home, making sure I'm under control and, you know, getting all my correct upgrades. And they're both going to play a little bit passive here. Two SCVs just now realizing they should probably be mining gas instead of sitting around and doing nothing. Going to be doing that. And we're seeing an engineering bay similarly timed as the Forge. So it's not like either player is going to take a dramatic upgrade advantage in this game. So we see here the Protoss going for the attack approach, which is slightly unusual. Hmm. Um, it, sometimes that indicates he wants to go into Colossi Phoenix, or could this indicate he really wants to use the Colossi yep. as opposed to something like Mass Charge Dots, everything like a Blink Stalker Colossi timing. Attack upgrade is a little more favorable because if your Blink Stalkers or Colossi are getting shot, they're probably going to die anyway. So you're really focusing more on killing the opponent, you, opposing units using force fields to keep them at bay. Of course, um, you know, the earlier st you start your upgrades, you, you can kind of have a sense of, of investing into the late game. Because obviously, the earlier you get that plus one, the earlier you get that plus two. The earlier you get the plus two, the earlier you get that plus three. And upgrades are so important as the game goes along. If you if you misstep at any point, your opponent can start taking that upgrade advantage. And that's when you start seeing those timings from the players as far as trying to take advantage of the upgrades that they have that their opponent doesn't have. If you've ever seen 3-3 three, three Zelts versus 1-1 one, one Marines Marauders, it's very scary indeed. So both these players got to be super on top of not only making sure they don't skip any steps as far as upgrades are concerned, but making sure they
they keep an eye on their opponent as far as, okay, how many forges does he have? How many engineering bays does he have? Is his armory done, uh, done yet? How far behind am I going to be on upgrades as this game goes along? We can see SDC went with double tech labs on two of his three barracks, which means he's going to be more marauder heavy than you might see from other Terrans. It also means he's going to have all three of those basic bio upgrades completed much faster. He already has the impact combat shields is almost done. Concussive shells is researched is very quickly, so it'll be done shortly as well. And he's looking to put some pressure with this small force, but yeah. Without the medevacs there to support it, it's going to be difficult. Yeah, I don't see him going up there before those medevacs arrive. Now, this is like the standard, you know, 10, 30, 11 minute timing when those medevacs start coming out. Again, I talked about this a little bit in the early game where if a Prolas can, can get away from all this unscathed, you know, they're going to be happy. So we see Blink getting started here from Max. And I think that's a very smart choice as far as dealing with drops can be difficult as you get past the 10 minute mark. Moving some units into his main base. Militia, of course, still should be stationed at his natural just in case he needs to throw down a, a photon overcharge. It might be around there, but we'll keep an eye on that. Two minute backs not going to be able to get much done. So Max said doing a great job uh, not taking any damage so far. And that's, of course, observer. partially due to his... Um, oh, Observer goes down. He has, he has amazing Observer coverage, which is uh, yeah. part of what's allowed him to deflect these pushes so well. Also knows Max Ed has stopped building probes for quite some time now, getting plus two weapons, uh, and like you mentioned, getting that blink research. He saw, he saw the observer there. Nice. Great move there by the STC. STC really trying to say lights out to Max Ed. The less observer is on the field, the much more careful the protest has to be about where those drops could be coming from. All right, look at that. Realizing he picked up two, picked off two observers, but this observer is going to see it. Look at this. Max Ed is everywhere with that observer coverage. He knows it's going on, or does he? He's sending everything to kill a Widowmine, but now he's going to try to go into the main base. Blink is not yet done, but that should be enough units in the main there to deal with that. Some Marines sneaking by into the natural, and he's trying to take it down a pylon. One Colossus marching back and get that out of there. And this drop shouldn't do much. I don't think he should get out of there. <laughs> Great. The Marines and Marauders are like, pick us up. <laughs> Great defense by Max Head there, just showing bulletproof base setup. Yep. Now uh, he went back a little bit into pro production with that third Nexus, but another drop here in the third base. Again, Max Head has happening. units everywhere they need to be. Max Head too good for that one. Marine not getting the memo, could be flying off the cliff as he dies. Balls do his death. Two Vikings looking out for those Colossus, of course. During all this, SDC has been able to identify his opponent's unit composition. He's been able to have a good sense of what to be expecting. So getting those Vikings out on the field, very heads-up move. Starting to take down these rocks so he can ease more easily reinforce his third base. But again, Max said with the observers everywhere. I think he's made like five or something in this game so far. He has two right now. And remember, I think two or three have been picked off. So I'm personally a big fan of a lot of observer play. It's essentially a map pack, right? If, if you can see exactly what your opponent is doing, you're going to be a very happy camper indeed. Observer is so important to PvT play. One thing we're going to see that's going to be super important is we, we notice two things. One, Maxed is going very heavy with the Colossi count. I think he's up to either four or five Colossi by now, really using them as the power of his army. Also, getting all the attack upgrades. No armor upgrades yet for Maxed, so he really needs those Colossi to do the maximum damage. The Blink Stalkers are going to try to kill the Vikings before he loses too many Colossi. SEC, though, has gone double starport. Mass Viking production. So in the coming minutes, there could be a battle where if he can keep the Vikings alive, take out the Colossi, yeah. that's going to determine the fight. Oh, so one Colossus getting hit. Stalkers need to be positioned a little bit better. Force fields need to go down here. That's exactly what's going to happen. The Stalkers blink it forward, taking down a Viking for two, maybe just one. Not getting that last one. Very low in HP. Of course, you got to focus down those Vikings with the Stalkers. If there's anything I learned from playing a lot of micro tournament over the weekend, that's a very important thing to do. Look at that one Colossus live with four life. Mumpship Core is going to defend the natural from another drop. Whoa! Took down a meta yeah. too. Max's defense is just so powerful. And you can see normally Terran like to be ahead in supply yeah. at this point. But he's actually a little bit behind in supplies because every time he's tried to find a hole in Max's defense, he's been punished. A unit here, Medivac there, it all adds up. And it's given Max a little bit of a supply advantage. But. Again, Maxed is relying entirely on the Colossi yeah. right now. He doesn't have any Templar out quite yet. He's been there super... Look at the, okay, I, I'm sorry. I have to yeah. point this out. But look at the timing of the Ghost Academy and the Templar Archives uh, production. <laughs> Both exactly at the exactly same point. Exactly the same time. I'm like, I'm thinking, when are they going to start transitioning? And boom. Uh, it just shows the game sense of these guys, you know, knowing what the next step is going to be. Now, if SEC uh, hadn't had all these failed attacks early, there may be a timing here because Max had went so colossi heavy. If he uh, right. was able to preserve all his Vikings and medevacs and, and units, he may have some pre-storm timing. But as it is, it's not clear if that timing is going to work or not, given the fact that he doesn't have a significant food advantage. Max is going to have three attack done versus only one one of the SEC. Not to mention, it's not like the third base is 
in an open area, like a star station, where you really have to start worrying about those Terran attacks when you're on three bases. If the SCC wants to engage, either A, he has to go through a little choke, a little tiny choke at the third, or B, he has to engage into the natural expansion of his opponent where there's a ramp. So, Mac, uh, STC might try to just position himself outside his opponent's third. Hold on, who might have engaged here. Max said he's approaching Max, so he, he, it looks like he might be happy about that. Stalker's coming forward, targeting on the Vikings, trying to keep those Vikings away from the Colossus. STC trying to make something happen. This is what I talked about. Going up that ramp is never going to be fun. A great force field here from Max said, and the STC is going to back away. But as I was saying, I wonder if he tries to like kind of posture here, get a concave at the bottom of the ramp. Don't let his opponent take a fourth while he gets a fourth up on his own. I wonder if that's doable. He may be looking to do that, of course. If we look at the, uh, the upgrade tab, there's 2-2 about to finish for STC, so he may want to wait until the 2-2 finishes before. And then try to engage up there? Yeah, maybe, or maybe just like you said, he gets denied right. opponent's fourth base. He has yeah. ghosts on the way, five ghosts being produced right now, fourth command center being built, Hellbass being added in. So many upgrades going on for the STC. So it's a little bit interesting. Every High Templar has been made into an Archon, unless my eyes are deceiving me. Yes, yeah, so... You know, it, it's, it's a little bit intriguing. He's, he's waiting a little bit on that, but Storm is still a decent amount of way, so it makes a little bit of sense, but just showing that Max Head wants to be completely safe at this point. A lot of Vikings here from the SCC. He's up to about 15 Vikings against four Colossi. That should neutralize those very well. Remember, there's no armor upgrades yet for the Protoss units. Storm is finishing, and now I think there is a High Templar on the field. Storing that inner energy, accumulating it, but now the ghosts are being added on. Cloak is underway. Four ghosts in production at a time. The Stalker's coming forward, trying to get some damage done again. The Stalkers can afford to do this because they can just blink away, maybe force a stim out of your opponent. That can be huge, but we have a sneaky little ghost advancing up the north side of the map here. Just going to wait in the brush, lurking in the darkness, perhaps looking out for those High Templar. Notice how SCC immediately starts the Cloak research as soon as he got the energy reactor for the ghost, wanting to utilize that as the game goes on. Five more gates on the way here from Max said. Wants to be able to replenish with a bunch of zealots or whatever he wants out of those gateways. Looks like he might be looking for an engagement. Stalker's blinking back. Very tense moment. This engagement could dictate the end of this game. It looks like Max said is going to go for it. Turning around the zealots. The Vikings targeting down the Colossus. Stalker's getting EMP'd by those ghosts. The STC trying to kite, trying to get that concave. The Medivac's doing plenty of healing overhead. But where are the storms? There they are, melting away a lot of the bio. But I think Max said might not have enough trying to reinforce with zealots. But the SCB. The, the STC powering through with that bio army. Oh, and now using the Vikings to go after the third base, of course, after they take out the Colossus, they're not as useful in the main engagement, but STC taking the victory in main engagement wow. and even doing vast damage with the Viking land. Why was that so one-sided? I mean, the supply is 139, now 142 to 90. Uh, the STC clearly ahead at this point in the game, denying his opponent's fourth. I mean, in that engagement, the upgrades were even, and, and Max said was relying on the Colossi to do damage, but there's too many Vikings. And once yeah. the Vikings took down the Colossi, he was stuck with Blink Stalkers, which are never going to do well. And, and, and when that happens, you, you kind of have to have Storm, right? Which, I mean, we saw two Storms, and they were great Storms, but we could see it wasn't enough. And those Storms are used at, like, the end of the battle, whereas you kind of want them to happen in the middle or even in the beginning, like kind of kiting away from your Terran opponent while storming behind you, forcing them to walk into the Storm. So Max said, thinking he had a timing there, taking perhaps an unfavorable engagement, and now he's going to find himself down in supply 138 to 116. Now, this isn't unwinnable for Maxet because he has those high Templars. If he can get some money storms, he can equalize that supply in a heartbeat. That's right. Of course, both players continuing their upgrades. Uh, Maxet about to get 2-3 three with 3 attack and 2 armor. SEC moments away from 3-3. Three, oh. three. The third base is vulnerable. Maxet is not responding quite yet. Now he's coming down the ramp, but that Nexus could just be targeted down. The EMPs on the Zealot Stalkers, the Colossus trying to get that damage done. High Templars waiting for enough energy for Storm and an Archon coming forward, but the STC taking it out of the third and charging to the natural, trying to target down those High Templars. Just going to pick up and back away. Oh my god, the third didn't die. I thought I, I assumed he targeted it down and killed it, but it is going to stay alive, and Max said is going to kill most of this army, but the Ghosts are cloaking up. Oh, the Templar are so vulnerable. If you could focus down those Templar using a snipe there, Templar turning into Archons to try to stay alive. More bio searches for it, but there's no medevacs to support this. And that's a dangerous choke to engage from the Terran player. Storm going down, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. A lot of Marauders, some Hellbats being mixed in here. One Viking overhead pecking away at that Colossus, but I think Maxed might barely hold off. I, I think the STC just needs to get his army together. Oh. And, and focus on preventing a fourth. I, I think that might be the best way to play this out. He just keeps applying the pressure. Archons going down. Templar warped in, but no energy Gosh. to use Storm. They have to turn to Archons, but oh. two of them get taken out before he can morph. Mothership coming forth, throwing down the photon overcharge, and it's actually going to have a dramatic effect here at the 23-minute mark of the game. That shows how close these engagements are. The SDC desperately trying to end this, but Max said just keeping on warping in more and more units, but at this point, SDC is happy with pretty much any trade, considering he's on four bases. And there's the GG, Max said, realizing 
his his uh, his downfall is inevitable. And the STC gonna take a one advantage. That's right, it really came out at a one engagement where, like you said, those storms are just a little bit too yeah. late. You know, the storms hit on the bio army, but he needed to storm the Vikings right now. Yeah. If he can storm the Vikings, then you can finish them off very quickly before your Colossi die. As soon as the Colossi die, yeah, storm looks nice, but they're the, you know, there's not too many zealots <laughs> in front there. Stalkers just disintegrated instantly. Yeah. And, and that was that to the mighty Protoss force. Yeah, I mean, really well played there from the STC. It was a very close game until that, that one point where obviously the STC had a much better uh, much better engagement. And it goes to show in StarCraft 2, like, you can have the best macro in the world. These guys were very even as far as that macro is concerned. But once you get to that major engagement, if you don't control it properly, you can find the, uh, you can find the game ending very quick for you. So, nice job there from the STC in game number one, but this is a best of three. So guys, stay tuned. You're watching WCS America Challenger League Game 2 between the STC and, of course, Maxed coming up.